of my daughter's shoes. At first glance, nothing special here. But look closely, and you will see that my daughters are wearing mismatched pairs of shoes on purpose without any warning to their now slightly embarrassed parents. At the time, my husband and I exchanged and, of course, they did this look and casually captured the moment. But this image has come to symbolize my evolution as an educator. Why shouldn't my kids be allowed to wear mismatched pairs of shoes? Why shouldn't they have a choice in their own footwear and apparel? And as I look back at this image, I'm reminded that kids should have a choice, and that is what self-directed learning is, a voice and a choice. So I always knew I wanted to be a teacher. When I drew this picture around second grade or so, I said I wanted to be a teacher because kids are nice. Not because I wanted to teach them all about gerunds, comma splices, and rhetorical devices, but because I liked kids. I liked teaching, and even then I liked learning. This picture still hangs on my refrigerator as a reminder. My job as an educator is not to ensure my students can name all the important characters in the crucible, but to ensure my students walk away from my class with a feeling of being liked, of being challenged, of being respected. But most importantly, I believe students should have a voice in their own education. So I ask you this, if you could learn anything, what would you learn? And if you're an adult, remember what it was like to go to school and attend class after class. And if you're a student, consider the possibility that you could learn whatever you choose. What would you do? I started teaching at the ripe old age of 22. My students were 17. It was truly a classic case of fake it till you make it. <laughs> I told them I had been teaching for five years or so and was closing in on 35. But actually, I was often mistaken as a student when I walked into the high school office. I was teaching at a large and successful public school in South Florida. It was the height of the standardized testing craze. So I was asked to teach basic reading and writing skills day after day, worksheet after worksheet. I was really bored. My students were really bored. I just wanted to talk to them about books, but my students really just wanted to talk about their weekends. <laughs> so at the end of my first school year, I asked my students to choose a contemporary young adult novel without any sort of online study guides. And I watched in awe as they meaningfully engaged in discussion about their chosen books. And when I would check in with them, they would excitedly reveal the latest plot developments. They really liked it. And that's when I first became hooked on student choice. After about three years in Florida, I heard of international education. So I took a job in Korea at a school that promised hiking and social events on the weekends. I was young, I was excited for a new challenge. I was given a brand new MacBook Pro for the first time, and a team of seasoned educators taught me about formative and summative assessments. And I was introduced to projects, fun projects, like book and movie trailers, songs from garage bands and podcasts. And as I worked with my students, I still felt like I wasn't giving them enough choice. And even though I learned a lot in those four years in Korea, I still felt like I was dictating the curriculum. I still, like, I still felt like I was telling my students what they had to learn with little choice in the process. So I'd like to tell you about an experiment that was conducted in 1999 by Sugata Mitra in Delhi. His team connected 100 internet-connected PCs and local alleys for the kids to play with. A hidden camera filmed everything. They watched as these kids taught themselves how to use the computer without any help, and then taught each other. 
This became known as the hole in the wall experiment. But I like how Mitra refers to it as minimally invasive education. What this experiment taught us is that we already know how to learn. We are already naturally curious individuals. Winston Churchill says, I am always ready to learn, but I do not always like to be taught. I really like this quote, because ironically enough, as a teacher, it pretty much sums up my personality. And probably a lot of the students I've taught over the years. You see, I do love to learn. I'm a voracious learner. But when you tell me that I have to learn something, I'm not quite as interested anymore. And I wonder if as an adult, as a teacher, I feel this way. Do my students feel this way as well? So now I'm going to say the cliche, I became a mom and it changed my life. I was truly terrified. I knew nothing about babies. My husband and I were completely overwhelmed and decided we needed some help. We moved back to the US to be closer to family and decided I would stay home and I would take a break from teaching, not knowing then how much parenthood would change my educational beliefs. Janet Gonzalez Mina says, the moment I decided to follow instead of lead, I discovered the joys of becoming a part of a small child's world. You see, I watched as my daughter taught herself everything she needed to know how to do, how to roll over, how to crawl, how to stand, how to walk, how to talk. And with the talking, as with so many kids, came the questions. Hey mom, how do rockets get to space? Hey mom, what is, what is our skin made of? Hey mom, where, where do babies really come from? And Google became my new best friend. I learned right along with her, and now my youngest daughter, as we explored their questions. You see, I followed them on their learning journeys. I stayed home with my daughters for three years, and this is what I learned by watching. We truly learn what we want to learn. It can't be forced, and it can't be dictated. Our job as people, as educators, is to provide the opportunities for students to take responsibility for their own learning, to become self-directed learners, just like you and me. So I ask you again, if you could learn anything, what would you learn? And imagine walking into a building where you have the time to learn whatever you choose. No course schedule, no textbooks, no expectations. What, what would you do? I would like to take a couple of minutes and talk to you about two alternative models of education. In Montessori schools, students progress at their own pace using hands-on tactile materials designed to provide immediate feedback with little influence from the teacher. They are given time, plenty of time, to follow their interests and explore the materials in the classroom that most engage them. They follow their curiosity and explore at their own pace. And you might recognize some of these former Montessorians, the founders of Google, Larry Page and Sergey Brin, and Frank, Julia Child, and even the founder of Amazon.com, Jeff Bezos. In democratic schools, such as the Sudbury schools, students have total free reign over what they learn, how they learn, and how they show their learning. You see, in Sudbury schools, students are not grouped according to age or grade. They are not formally assessed. They are not asked to learn information that is not meaningful to them. In a study of Sudbury graduates, 42% go on to become entrepreneurs, and a high number of students go on to pursue careers in the arts. And there is much research to be done regarding alternate methods of schooling. But the principle remains the same. Students do want to learn when they have that choice. So back to my educational journey. When I went back to teaching, I took a job as a virtual teacher teaching 12th grade English online. And as some of you might know, with virtual schools, the curriculum is already in place, so students are able to learn at their own pace. For the first time, I was able to take a step back and watch. Instead of lesson planning, I was facilitating. And when a student had a question, that's when I would step in with a phone call or a meet in a virtual classroom 
It was the most fulfilling job I've ever had. I was able to work with students all across the US to personalize their learning. I became even more convinced that what education truly needs are more guides and more coaches to help individualize instruction. So now here I am, 10 years into teaching, five years into parenting, and my educational beliefs have been turned upside down. Fortunately, I now work at a school that does value student feedback and student reflection. And I'm not saying that just because I work here. <laughs> As I work with my colleagues on planning units and assessments, we do ask, how can the students contribute what do they get to choose? And as we give them more choice in the books they read, the themes they explore, and the questions they ask, I do see a difference. Because I do believe students want to learn. They just want to have a part in that process. And just this past week, I had the opportunity to watch my own students deliver their own talks to answer the question, what matters to you? I can't even tell you how amazing of an experience it was to watch my students share their own original ideas that they chose. It was the best assignment I've ever given, and I told them so. The power in being able to choose. Benjamin Franklin said, tell me and I forget, teach me and I remember, involve me and I learn. We can certainly create environments for student learning, and we do with engaging materials and best practices in the classroom. But the bottom line is that students will be more motivated if they have that voice in the process. So let's let them choose what to read, what to write, what to ask. Let's let them decide. So what can we do? How can we incorporate self-directed learning into our schools? It takes a community to educate a child. And we can all play our part. So educators, Let's ask our students to pose the questions. Let's ask them to follow their interests, to create their own learning plan, and decide how to authentically present their ideas. Let's ask them to solve real problems, address real issues, and provide real solutions. Because that is what education is, after all. It is not learning what everybody else wants us to learn. It is knowing how to learn, how to find the answers to our questions. And students, I challenge you to be bold, be brave, take responsibility for your life and your mind. Learn as much as you can. I know that grades will give you opportunities, but they do not define you. You are not a letter or a number. And parents, let's trust our children. Let's take a step back and watch and talk to them about what interests them. And it may not always be what we want it to be. And their idea of success might be different from ours. But the beauty of our world is that everyone has a place and everyone can contribute. Mark Twain said, I never let schooling interfere with my education. Because he knew the true goal of education was knowing how to learn. So let's embrace that ideology and create a community where we learn and grow together. My journey as an educator has led me to believe that students deserve a voice in their education. So I ask you again, if you could learn anything, what would you learn? Thank you.